I recently had the chance to take a tour of Digital Domain, a visual effects house founded by people like James Cameron and Stan Winston. And along with Weta in New Zealand, they were responsible for creating Thanos in Avengers Infinity War. The team showed us a ton of their motion capture equipment including these suits and this helmet camera used to capture the facial performance of actor Josh Brolin. You've probably seen actors with dots drawn on their face during production, and our guides explained how they'd make a mask of the person's face, cut out holes in it, and use that to repaint the marks on them each day to save time. We got a look at what's called a FAX booth, F-A-C-S, which stands for Facial Action Coding System. It's basically a room with lights and about 60 cameras set up for the sole purpose of capturing and logging a performer's facial movements. Later, we were taken into what's called a volume, basically a huge empty room with its own set of cameras all around it. Rooms like these are where movies like Avatar and Ready Player One were filmed. Instead of being shot in a motion capture volume, the production team for Infinity War spread small cameras like these throughout the actual sets and attached motion capture equipment to the film camera, allowing the visual effects team to see what Brolin looked like in the moment with a rudimentary version of Thanos over the top of him. That way the camera operators could frame the shots properly for what was supposed to be an 8 foot character, and then those small cameras were all digitally removed from the final movie. To create Thanos, the team began with this character model. By hand, artists went in and added tons of details to his face, all of the contours and wrinkles you see in the final version. Taking Brolin's facial movements from the fax booth we saw before, the modeling artists will go into every shape Thanos' face could possibly make and correct or enhance those shapes. They'd apply texturing elements, freckles, imperfections, all sorts of aspects to add a level of reality to the character, and they'd really concentrate on making sure his eye movements came through. This is one of the first tests Digital Domain sent to Marvel to prove that they were on the right track. Now I heard that you were meaning to get in touch with me, but then I heard you were dead. And I also heard that you were a king, and various other things. But the fact is, Loki, you and I are not the sort people understand. The sort people fear. Now I got the information that I need, and now I have to break your neck. It's just the way it is. I'm not, I'm just a messenger. For each shot, animation director Phil Kramer would look at Brolin's helmet performance, which you can see on the far right side of the screen, and a high-resolution mask created with machine learning algorithms, which you can see second from the right. He and his team would retarget that performance onto Thanos, copying all of the details onto the model while keeping the essence of Brolin's performance intact. That made it easier to watch and easier for directors Anthony and Joe Rousseau to make decisions without the distracting apparatus around the character's head. Here you can see what Brolin looked like through monitors on the set, complete with a visible helmet cam and a low resolution version of Thanos' face. Digital Domain used video game rendering to create a high-end look of the character that's much closer to the final version. At the end of the movie, when Thanos has triumphed and he encounters a young Gamora once again, one of the early ideas was to have him walking on a river of blood, intended to represent the blood of his victims. Visual effects supervisor Dan DeLue told us that, quote, got a bit dark, end quote. So they explored other options and ultimately came upon what we see in the final version. I sat down with DeLue and Digital Domain's Kelly Port for a quick interview. Hey guys. Hey. How did you decide how much of Josh Brolin you wanted to see in Thanos? What was that process like for you? Uh, it, it's something that happened early, a couple stages. One, when we first started working on the design and, and, and modifying it from what we've seen in some of the previous films. And so it was done mostly in, in illustration and then this program called ZBrush where you can actually sculpt the shape. So, you know, we had kind of a, you know, a wedge or a bracket of like, you know, too much Brolin, not enough Brolin and just the right amount of Brolin. And then we had just the right amount of Roland, just at least from a, from a still frame. We sent it over to the digital domain, and 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 did I have them kind of start figuring out the animation and kind of how much yeah, to bring it in there? I think it's it's a it's basically imagine morphing from Josh Brolin's face to, to Thanos, and in that slider 
you know of time you you f you kind of just find it you know it's it's a mm -hmm. subjective thing and, and i think well that's you now that's too much brawn no that's too much thanos and well, you just kind of find and it i think it's something we backed away from too when we were first designing because when it was just a still it's like oh that's josh brawn that's not thanos but when you start seeing the performance push through it then you can kind of relax into a little bit more josh that's right yeah, yeah. because um if once he's performing and then you're seeing a lot more brolin because it's, that's him performing so you can maybe dial the brolin back mm -hmm. a little bit you know and performance capture has been around for a long time was there anything on infinity war that was never seen before that you guys worked on that that sort of pushed the envelope a little bit well i think it's the you know the technology in terms of capturing the performance it's it's you know the, the cameras have improved the the helmet cams have improved but i think it's what you actually do with that information that you collect mm -hmm. that made the difference on this show yeah and I, i'm not sure if it's 100 percent unique to this uh project but it was it's nice to for the actors to be in a set acting with each other um and not just necessarily in a, in a sort of a sanitized motion capture volume mm -hmm. so uh instead of that the the sets were peppered with a lot of motion capture cameras in and amongst you know the set which was very helpful uh to, i think to overall improvement of the actor's performance so that they're not just they're already having a hard enough time you know in the mm -hmm. silly motion capture suits and having to, or lots of blue screen around them but to to make it as as helpful to them as possible to be in and amongst the set mm -hmm. and working with each other mm -hmm. i think was a big benefit too okay. How much of this movie was pre vised before the script was written? Like, were there any big set pieces that yeah. were locked in ahead of time? Yeah, a lot of the big sequences will, will, will viz. It's like, so, Thanos' battle on Titan, that was viz. A large portion of Wakanda was viz. Uh, a lot of New York, the battle of New York was viz. Spidey's, all the race to space, Spidey going into space, that was viz. And you know, we, we have a unique kind of a way of doing it where it's, you know, a lot of it will be pre vis where you have artists on computers. Uh, we'll have when our stunt team starts, they'll start doing their own viz. So you have pre viz and stunt viz there, and then you'll have storyboards as well. So when you watch the reel cut together, you can see the movie, but it's just kind of crazy jumping back and forth between, you know, pre viz that's rendered and stuntmen with cardboard boxes they're bumping into, and then straight back into storyboards. Was there a single shot that changed the most for you guys over the course of uh, involving Thanos or anything else really that that uh, over the course of this movie that changed dramatically from its original conception to the the final version? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's Titan stayed pretty true. I mean, the, what we work with on Titan, we you know generally we we go long. You know, we we, we you know go for a wide you know longer cut. And then so we can kind of pick out the best gags as we go along with it. Um, you know, so there's, there's alternate versions of, you know, all the scenes. There's an alternate version of the Wizard's Battle with Strange and Thanos. And, and then, you know, the, the smaller version that ends up in the film. I think the, you know, something like the, the Threshers in Wakanda, they went through a lot of design because it was just, yeah, it was one of those things that wasn't quite working until ILM got in there and just, you know, had the big Thresher come up behind Panther. And it was like, that's going to work now. That's going to be fine. <laughs> Yeah, and I think um, for us, uh, from a studio perspective, oftentimes with uh, with Dan and the, and the directors and the, you know the post viz team, third floor, we get a lot of the stuff that's cut together. Um, so it's a roadmap that's pretty solid. Um, sometimes we would get, for example, the the uh, way station. You know, like mm -hmm. we'd have sort of a this is after he snaps his fingers. Um, what that world with little Gamora, how that should be represented. Mm -hmm. So we went through sort of an exploratory um, phase with that one. So, you know, looking at different options and, and what does that mean and, and talking a lot about that. So that went th through some st changes, for, at least for our part. You know. For the past few years, I've been hearing a lot of horror stories about um, visual effects houses taking on increased workloads for maybe smaller commissions from big studios and stuff. Do you guys think that there are any solutions to that problem? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, you know, you're, you're in a place where, you know, where visual effects tell, allow us to tell bigger stories than we've been able to be able to tell before. And so as a result, you know, we're getting more and more shots and, you know, trying to figure out the best way to deal with that. You know, so it's, you know, it's, we're at a point where I think there's some things that need to be worked on, but I don't know if we've really solved it yet. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a competitive industry. Um, it's, um, it's a it's a business 
uh, both ends, both for what we do, like um, as a visual effects studio and other visual effects studios, but it's also obviously a business for Disney, for Marvel. Um, so everyone's trying, you know, their best to to do their best at that business. Um, and it's also uh, incumbent on our ourselves to make ourselves comp as more as competitive as possible too by being more efficient and you know faster. So it, it's uh, sort of the way it is. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks, guys. Appreciate cool. it. Thank you. And finally, we also got to see the actual Infinity Gauntlet that was used during the making of the movie. In addition to helping Josh Brolin feel the actual weight of the gauntlet and add that reality into his performance, it served as a practical reference point for their visual effects team, so they'd know how it reacted to certain lighting when they needed to recreate the final digital version. And since I got to wear it, there's really only one way to end this video. Ready? Let's go. Let's put on our mean faces. Hold on, there's a fly. There is something awesome about seeing these heroes interacting with each other for the first time. I'm Dr. S I'm Dr. I Can't Walk. <laughs> you guys are screwed now! It's gonna look awesome. Cool? So cool. All right, kid, you're an Avenger now. Yes! Marvel Studios, Avengers Infinity War, on digital today.